So how many of you in this classroom have ever had a teacher that just stood in front of the classroom and lectured and just took notes? And afterwards, you flushed away all of the material and never wanted to think about it again. Or how about how many of you consider yourselves more of a visual or a hands-on learner than somebody that just listens to somebody who stands in front? Well, the banking concept of education, as described by Paula Fieri, who is the person who coined the term, is, edu is uh, of education in which students are the depositories, and the teacher is a depositor. Instead of communicating, the teacher issues communiques and makes deposits, which the students patiently receive, memorize, and repeat. This is a banking concept, and the scope of action allowed to the students extends only as far as receiving, filing, and storing the details. Now, my claim is that the banking concept of education is completely unreliable. And to support my claim, I will focus on uh, the banking concept creating study habits that are uh, learning and study habits that are bad. Uh, it introduces unintelligent knowledge and thought, and most people uh, don't find it beneficial because it's not their learning style. How exactly might the banking concept of education teach bad study habits? Well, when your teacher spends the entire class time in front of the class talking, the students assume that, there has, that all the information they covered must be correct. And it all must be on the test. Every single little detail. There, if it was covered there, then it's right. And it's not going to be covered. It's, what's in the book is not necessarily true. It's what the teacher is looking for. And so you don't even bother to open the book or look around somewhere else. And then come test day, <coughs> You do that test and you find out you have some wrong information. Another thing about the teacher who's standing in front of the classroom talking is that you get obsessed with the details. You want to learn, you want to make sure you have down every single note that the, per, that the teacher put up on the PowerPoint or is talking or everything. And that just drives you crazy about those details, which don't necessarily have, help you with a full concept or fact. And while details are important, not understanding the actual concept that's being taught, well, what's the point of that? And then the last thing, when, uh, in this piece, uh, when, you, when somebody is forced to learn every single detail in a class and then take a test, a lot of people tend to flush away the entire material and never think about it again, which introduces unintelligent knowledge and conversation. Now when I say unintelligent, I don't mean stupidity or airheadedness. While this is what like, comes out a lot of the time, the underlying cause is the presumption that because one did in fact pass the test, with flying colors maybe, one makes a valuable contribution to the, dis to the discussion. Except there's that whole flushing away, flushing it away. Which means you don't actually retain any of the information that you possibly have learned. So, what does that cause? That makes people who come up to you or your friends having conversations and make a completely stupid remark that you don't know where you came from and are just like, did you even take that class? You're not sure if it happened. <laughs> or maybe you even make your mistake yourself. You're maybe having a conversation about your friends in Bunker Hill and how you've been there and that, you know, you can't believe you stood somewhere where people died. Well, you know, Bunk Battle of Bunker Hill wasn't actually fought on Bunker Hill, and how many of you remember that? Uh, and then, how do we avoid making such mistakes? Well, uh, how about teaching students in a fashion that actually benefits them? Seventy-seven, as research done by Dr. Linda Krieger Silverman in 2005. 77% of people consider themselves visual spatial learners versus audio. So in reality, more people would benefit from actually opening a textbook or ta uh, uh, taking notes and then rather than listening to a subject or even doing what is being taught. In an economics class, maybe doing an uh, actual project that inquires economics or in art class and how everything is hands-on, even mathematics, even coming up to the board and doing the, the problems out themselves instead of listening to the teacher doing it would be considerably more beneficial to them. So the banking concept of education is unreliable because, oh, 
I'm so sorry. Last, last point I wanted to make. Uh, you know, to give an example of hands-on learning and how beneficial it is, our own school, Cal Poly Pomona. Uh, we thrive on hands-on uh, learning and uh, because we thrive on it, 88% of four-year graduate students of Cal Poly Pomona uh, are employed and stay employed for years after graduating, and that's on our website. You can look it up. It's 2008 thing. And uh, so, in conclusion, the banking concept of education is unreliable because it breeds inefficient learners, unintelligent converses, and simply does not benefit 77% of the population. So the outcome of the BSc, the banking concept of education, is so generally negative or unhealthy. Why is it so widespread and popularly used? Thank you. All right, uh, the opening survey and rhetorical questions are okay to set up what the topic is. You've got an explanation of the subject matter. You've got a very clear statement of what the proposition is. Uh, the secondary claims are previewed okay. The first one, though, is not really a claim. It's just an identification for the material in that particular point. It doesn't make an inference. Uh, and, I did, and once you got into the body of the speech, I didn't think that you were very consistent about that signposting, and so it became uh, basically just a uh, continuous drive through the material without uh, showing how those steps are building on one another. Um, on, the, on the evidence, the only two citations that you give us, you got the one uh, person who talked about 77% uh, identify themselves as primarily visual learners, and then you've got the statistic from uh, the Cal Poly website about the people who happen to be employed. Other than that, there isn't any information that says that people flush out information that they learn in class, that they aren't able to retain it. Uh, that all is dependent on your hypothetical examples. And you've got the one personal illustration uh, dealing with Bunker Hill. I'm not even sure if it's a real example. It's probably a hypothetical one as well. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure that that's a safe uh, illustration to be generalizing from. So I think you needed a lot more data on the point. There's a lot of criticism of this type of education in uh, research for uh, people who are in the education major. So there should be some information that you could lay your hands on that would support this position better. I thought you gave pretty good explanations of the argument. I'm just not sure that the argument that you gave was convincing. I thought you did a nice job presenting it. And uh, like I said, you need some information on some of those secondary claims. All right. Thank you.